Today, we're going to talk about some serious and sensitive topics with RPGs, but I hope you stick around and listen and join this conversation and everything. Hey everybody, Bobby from the GM Table, and today we're doing something a little different. Uh, I'm going to talk about some stuff that's going on in the community, as well as stuff in RPGs in general, as well as some tips, some tools, and going to bring up a book that came out recently that's stirring up a lot of stuff. So, first and foremost, the book. This. Consent in Gaming. This was released earlier this week, at least when I'm recording it, by Monty Cook Games. You may have noticed a lot of people doing reviews about this book, and a lot of people having very strong opinions about this book. I am going to bring up stuff in this book, but this video isn't specifically about this book. In fact, a lot of this video is about responses to this book. So you may be wondering what it is. Well, first and foremost, it is free. It is an absolutely free zero dollars pdf you can buy it through monty cook's website or on drive through rpg as a pdf doesn't cost you anything it's a small book the entire thing's 13 pages which means even the time investment to read it is next to nothing so why are we bringing this up well to me this may be one of the most important pdfs to come out for RPG as a hobby, for tabletop RPG as a hobby, maybe ever. This book is a bunch of tools and advice for GMs to help them gauge what their players can and can't handle. We've been seeing things pop up, things like the X card, things like shadows and veils, and more or less a bunch of different tools for letting players inform their GM what they are and aren't comfortable with whether players are okay with things like rape in their games. And this is not a bad thing. First and foremost, if you're here saying, we, we don't need this brought up in RPGs and blah, 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 you are wrong. <laughs> I don't want to be blunt about it, but you are wrong. Now, I'm going to cover a few very base things I'm seeing pop up a lot. And then I'm going to discuss why this is important on top of it. If you just clicked off this video when I said you are wrong, well, you're not even listening to me anymore. If you haven't yet, please listen to this, hear some of this stuff out, and learn. <laughs> the biggest thing, the one that bugs me the most, is I'm seeing as more and more of this stuff has been coming, as more and more games have been discussing these issues, and now there's a proc specifically for one of the bigger publishers for free dedicated to this. I'm seeing a lot of people go, I don't know why social issues need to be brought up in my game. Tabletop RPGs are a social game. You do, I'm going to look straight at the camera because I know I'm bad at that. You do not play this game alone. You play it with other people. It is social. Social issues are inherently part of this game. Now, if you're also one of the people, and this tends to be tied of, I know my players are okay with all this stuff. This isn't even needed. As I said, this doesn't cost you any money. It is 13 pages for you as the GM. The part you actually like bring to your players, there's multiple tools. The easiest is the checklist at the back, which is one page they go over. It's a very little time investment. It is a zero money investment. The worst thing that can happen is you give this to your players and they confirm that you are right and nothing changes, but it's like five minutes and you could give it to your players and you might find out while you thought all your players were okay with everything, maybe some of them weren't. Maybe some of them didn't want to bring it up. And coming to the GM and telling the GM specifically what does and doesn't make them uncomfortable isn't easy for everybody. Thinking and trying to come up with a list of what you don't find comfortable is definitely not easy. There are blank spots where they can fill out additional things, but having a list and go, oh yeah, I'm not cool with that. That is huge for players. If you think finding out your players don't like things you were including or aren't comfortable with things you were including is a bad thing, I'm going to be real blunt. Stop GMing because you're not GMing for your players, you're GMing for you. And you don't host the party for yourself. 
This is, again, a social game. Don't look at this completely selfishly. Just because you are okay with things doesn't mean everyone at the table is okay with things. And just because someone isn't okay with something doesn't mean they're always going to be comfortable telling you. Again, I'm going to try and keep this short. I'm going to try and not make it ranty. Those are the two biggest ones. If you don't think social issues need to be in this hobby, it's a social hobby. Sorry, had to cut. Lunch arrived. Anyways, I'm trying to keep this short. But if your biggest issue is you think you know what your players want better than them, and you don't want to hear what makes your players comfortable or uncomfortable, you're not caring about your players. And as a GM, if you want your games to be successful, you need to care about your players. If you have problems with the fact that RPGs are becoming more inclusive, it boils down to one of two things. Either you don't think RPGs should include certain people, at which point you need to face facts. Whether you think you are or not, you're being a bigot. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I'm fine with that because I don't need any of that and the hobby doesn't need any of that. If we want the hobby to grow, we need to include everyone. If you're thinking, well, those people aren't at my table, the hobby is bigger than your table. And again, that loops back to the fact that not all players are comfortable telling their DM certain things. Maybe certain types of people are at your table and you didn't even know. Maybe people who feel certain ways about topics are at your table and you didn't know. This book is not the only thing out there. Resources have been building. The discussion has been building. That's why this isn't just a review of this book. It's a discussion of the overall topic that this book created and is kind of just the crest of the wave that's been building. This is a long time coming. This is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for the hobby. If you think it's a bad thing for your table, your table's in the past. Your table is going to fade away. We need more people. If we want this hobby to be mainstream, if we want this hobby to be accepted, we also have to be accepting. If you want to be a good GM on a personal note, everybody talks about catering their story to their players and doing this and that. And I know, not everyone feels that. Some people think the railroad's the only way to go and they tend to have control issues. All GMs do a little, but even more so. If you don't want to care about what makes your players comfortable emotionally and psychologically, you are not doing them a service. Again, don't want to get into rants and go into this. I'm not naming names. There are stories of people I know. And even last night, I found out stories of not one of my players, but one of my players. We're just going to say good friend without getting too involved where this person grew to dread gaming. They enjoyed aspects of tabletop gaming, but they had a DM that was pushing things they weren't comfortable with so hard and so often, the thought of going to that game was filling with them with dread and anxiety. They didn't want to do it, but they also didn't want to leave the hobby. It got so bad when they finally got to other games they basically had low-level PTSD of not knowing how to react. Certain things that weren't even, like, triggering anxiety and all that did now because of the awful stuff that DM forced on that player. That is not good. Now, finally, again, I'm trying real hard deep down not to get ranty and yelling. There are certain genres that are worse than others. There are certain communities into some systems that are being much worse than others. I'm not naming names. I'm not calling things out. But one of those systems and genres is very gun-focused, which is not a bad thing on its own. You enjoy that, you enjoy that. But that focus tends to also bring in some mindsets at times. And there are people who are straight up trying to say, if these topics aren't in the game, it is not this genre. Not only are they saying that, they're trying to tell some of the largest writers in the genre this. You need to get your heads out of your ass. <laughs> this is not the PG video. I know I don't always censor myself in these videos anyways, but I'm just going to be blunt in this. Get your head out of your ass. Stop thinking about just yourself. If you care about the hobby, 
not just you, not just your own fun. If you care about the hobby, you'll see how important this is. If you don't want to see past that, we're reaching a point where the majority of us that are in the hobby, we don't have the time or energy to care anymore. We're just going to leave you behind. Anyways, I really hope if you haven't heard about this product, if you didn't know this stuff was out there, if you're in one of these situations, sadly, where you're the player and you don't feel like you can talk to your GM, try and get this towards them. Understand for those players in those situations that those aren't the only types of GMs. And let's all try and grow. Let's try and get this out there. And I know I just said grow, but in all honesty, let's all just grow up a little bit. Okay? I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.